Good morning and welcome to Creative Living Fellowship's online Sunday service. Please join me in our opening song, Use Me. CLF. Good morning, CLF. Hi, CLF. Good morning, CLF. May peace and love be with you all. Good morning. I'm Carrie Sherman. I'm a licensed practitioner here at Creative Living Fellowship. Our senior minister, Reverend Dr. Sherry F. McCreary has the day off, but she'll be back with us next week. I'm delighted to serve as the Sunday service host today and to welcome you to our online Sunday service. Creative Living Fellowship is a religious science church and teaching center, and we honor all paths that lead to truth. Our vision is to be a community of care, connection and creation that opens hearts and incubates dreams. And we do that through the principles and practices of the science of mind. We have two practitioners this morning, Fran Peck and Reverend Dr. Joyce Bukers, who are holding high watch for us this morning. And what that means is they are sitting in meditation and prayerful contemplation as we move through the service this morning. Thank you, Fran and Joyce, for holding high watch for us. 
our Sunday service team members who make this online service possible are Nicole Jordan and Deb Covington, our AV team, David Panessa, our music director, and Reverend Mary Jane Hyde is providing technical support. Thank each and every one of you for your service this morning. Nicole Jordan will be bringing our announcements to us here momentarily. After the announcements, there will be a brief gong wash. There will be a few moments of silence after the gong wash. And then practitioner Rhonda Emmerich will bring us the reading and our evocation. But first, here are, are the announcements. Good morning, Creative Living Fellowship. Are you ready for today's announcements? Your children are invited to join our youth ministry weekly for a Zoom lesson Sundays at 1 p.m. Lessons are focused on nurturing spirituality and science of mind, practices for our kids. Weekly topics are inspired by Reverend Sherry's themes and include social emotional growth mindset and mindfulness practices. Don't meditate alone, meditate with us in Zoom. Join us for midday meditation at noon, Monday through Thursday, now in Zoom. We are still live streaming to Facebook if you prefer to participate that way. I'm sure Sinatra, our meditation cat, will still make an appearance because he enjoys crashing, crashing a Zoom room as much as he enjoys Facebook Live. Stay connected and supported with your CLF family and join Reverend Sherry every Tuesday as she hosts a Community Care Connection Zoom meeting at 6.30 p.m. This week, Reverend Sherry will be leading us in life's purpose visioning. This is a powerful process that reveals more the more you do it. Visioning is one of our sacred seven practices and aligns you to possibilities greater than you can have ever imagined for your experience. Join us this Tuesday and open up, surrender, and align to God's vision for your life. We look forward to seeing you then. We have cats, we have dogs, we have lizards, and even teddy bears. At least we will on Friday, September 25th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Join animal chaplain Fran Peck for another yappy hour. Have you ever noticed during an online meeting event or midday meditation and your pet just has to get in on it? Well, now the spotlight is for them. Let's connect and bond over our furry, feathery, and even scaly friends and family. Drop in whenever you can make it and show your geek side with some animal trivia. Active members, it's here. Next Sunday, September 27th at 1130 AM is our special membership meeting. This is a business meeting that requires the attendance of active members to vote on any business decisions needing to be made. This meeting is also open to the entire community. However, only active members will be eligible to vote. And speaking of voting, did you know five states currently vote by mail with no difficulty? In 2018, a White House investigation of election corruption found no evidence of fraud related to mail-in ball ballots. We are all called to be faithful citizens and vote. We at Creative Living Fellowship want to remind you and help you to register to vote. So we have several voting resource links available to you in the comments. Remember, your vote counts. Also remember, you can use text to give to make your, C your contributions to CLF. Simply text the amount you'd like to give to 602-610-1868. And if it's your first time donating by text, you'll be sent a text link to be set up your account. And then after that, it's as simple as texting the amount you'd like to tithe to 602-610-1868. And CLF is a tithing church, which means we tithe off of your tithes and donations. And we're always looking for nonprofits to send our quarterly tithes to. If you have a nonprofit you would like to nominate, please use the link found in the comments to submit your recommendation. And note, you need to fill out the form in order to have your recommendation considered. Our Sunday prayer room is available to you after service today. There's no reason to miss out on your post-service prayer stop with a practitioner. 
Technology enables us to continue to provide this service to you. So immediately after service, head on over to Zoom and let one of our licensed practitioners in a private virtual room hold the truth for you, no matter what you're going through, and offer you support through spiritual mind treatment and using spiritual practices. We also have post-service fellowship too. Join practitioner Jeannie Sovereigns in Facebook Messenger chat from 1115 to 1215 and hang out. Discuss the service, what's on your mind or heart, or share something new going on with you. You can find the details for all of our events with their links on our website under events, under our Facebook events, posted in the comments or in your weekly newsletter. Well, that is it for today's announcements, and it is now time to move on to our gong wash, followed by a moment of silence. Our reading today comes from the Science of Mind textbook, pages 464 and 465. This is from the Prodigal Son, The Great Awakening. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? And when he came to himself, this is the great awakening, the moment in which we now live. In this moment, we are asking the question of ourselves. Is there not plenty in the universe? Why do we want? In this divine awakening, there seems to be an inner witness who remembers that we came from a heavenly state. There seems to be an answer from the great within, which says the father's house is filled with peace, power, and plenty. The universe is not limited. It is abundant, lavish, extravagant. Nothing can take, be taken from nor added to it. Creation is the play of life upon itself. We know by intuition that there is something beyond what we have so far consciously experienced in this world. Poets have sung of it, and there are moments in the lives of all when the veil seems thin between and we almost enter into the heavenly estate. This is the meaning of coming to oneself. 
We are still in the awakening state. We have not yet consciously entered into the state of perfect wholeness. We know that such a state is a reality and that we, sh we shall yet attain this reality. Nothing can dislodge this inner and intuitive perception from our mentality. We know it as certain as we know that we live. This is God in us knowing itself. We are awakening to this realization that the universe is perfect and complete. It gives, it loves, it is good and wills only good to all alike. So continuing in the sacred space that has been created for us, we take this time together in love and thanksgiving and gratitude to recognize the one power, the one presence, the one essence that is expressing itself in, through, and as each one of us individually and collectively, expressing itself through the technology that brings us together, expressing us in every life experience, in every situation, in every circumstance, in every relationship, it is always expressing. As I know is expressing as me here and now, I know that it is expressing in each and in every individual that is here today with us, each and individual on this planet, knowing that we are one. And as I run to speak my word, I speak my word into the law with an authority, knowing, claiming, and accepting divine blessings upon our congregation, upon Reverend Sally as she brings the message to us, upon Reverend Dr. Sherry, I speak blessings. I speak blessings for our planet, knowing that healing, that love, abundance is our only truth. Regardless of what the perceptions may be, love is the truth for each and every one. I bless each and every religion, faith tradition, philosophy, knowing that we are bound by love as one. And for this, I am grateful. I am thankful. I am thankful for the perfect manifestation of this prayer. As I know, the law always says yes. I release this prayer into the law, knowing it is done. And so it is. And we are very excited today to welcome as our guest artist, Gary Lynn Floyd. Good morning, Creative Living Fellowship. Gary Lynn Floyd here. I sure miss you down there in Phoenix. I look forward to the time when I can come back and be with you in person. Love you all. Here's a new song Jamie Lula and I wrote. It's called Oh Great Spirit. Oh Great Spirit of love giving freely refusing none oh great spirit of love eternal goodness flows like a flood oh great spirit of love giving freely giving freely refusing none oh great spirit sing it oh great spirit of love eternal goodness eternal goodness flows like a flood love is all all is love Join us in singing the music of one in all, all in one. No greater blessing neath moon and sun. One more time, O 
great spirit oh great spirit of love giving freely giving freely refusing none refusing none oh great spirit oh great spirit of love eternal goodness eternal goodness flows like a flood love is all all is love join us in singing the music of one in all all in one no greater blessing neath moon and sun no greater blessing oh great spirit no greater blessing oh great spirit no greater blessing Oh, great spirit. Love you. Wow. Fantastic. Gary, thank you so much for being with us today and that sharing that beautiful song. You are a treasure. Oh. It is now my honor to introduce our guest speaker today, Reverend Sally Robbins, has been a minister for over 20 years and has been the senior minister at three churches in Maryland and in Arizona. She currently lives in Asheville, North Carolina. Reverend Sally came to the ministry after over 25 years in the corporate and entrepreneurial worlds. Her background includes extensive experience in sales and marketing, television and radio advertising, and event production. Reverend Sally is a contributing writer to Science of Mind magazine and has also served at the national level at the Centers for Spiritual Living in a variety of roles. Uh, including three times being named co-chair of the CSL event committee. Please join me this morning in welcoming Reverend Sally Roberts. Good morning, CLF. Oh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here with you today. It has been two and a half years since I left Arizona. And I miss you dearly. I cannot wait to come back and visit you. But for now, we get to Zoom together. How exciting is that? Thank you, Dr. Sherry, for inviting me to be a part of the service today. And my topic today is the art of awakening. Because I think that there are many of us who are getting the glimmers that maybe, maybe there's something pulling us forward into a shift in consciousness and awakening and awareness. And so I'd like to focus on that today. I'm gonna to share my screen so that I can show you some of the ideas that I have around this because isn't awakening what we're all here to do? We're all here to understand that life is always an evolving force, an evolving force. Dr. Ernest Holmes called it the upward spiral, that we're always in that place of a deepening and we can choose whether or not to listen to that call. We can choose whether or not to evolve in that upward spiral. But those of us who are here, those of us who are a part of CLF and all the guests that might be watching, we understand that this is a pivotal time on our planet and that we are being called to a greater mission to not only serve the, our local community, but to the greater planet as well. So I wanna start by showing you a wonderful quote 
And it says, our opportunities for awakening are cleverly disguised as crisis, as discomfort, and even pain. Would you agree? Can I get an amen to that? We are absolutely in a space where the whirlwind, the tumultuous activity that is going on in our world, the chaos that is happening in our world is a call. It's a cry for leadership, for spiritual leadership especially. And that's when we, if you've forgotten that you are a master, I'm going to remind you of that today. You are a master spiritual being and that you are being called to something that is pushing you to that higher vibration, that higher frequency, that higher level of existence. It is so easy to talk about the principles that we espouse, is it not? It is so easy to say scripture and verse of what our new thought tenets are. And yet, yet that is, that is just the surface. We are absolutely being demanded to live these principles. And if we're not, we are missing the very juice of why we are here. So perhaps, perhaps, I'd like you to think about this. Perhaps what is going on in the world, which is rather scary sometimes, divisive, all of those things that, that we, we watch the news and go, what is happening to our world? But I'd like you to consider perhaps that this is promoting our awakening. All of these activities are actually demanding that we come to that new level of awareness. Challenge. Challenge is what motivates us to stay in this game. I love what Tama Keeves had to say about this. She says, you need an extraordinary experience to unlock your extraordinary mind. That's the power of leaving behind your familiar life and distractions. That is a very accurate description of what is happening in 2020, where we are actually having to leave behind an old life. We're having to pivot to create a new life. And change is always scary and threatening even sometimes. And yet, that's where the, the, the caterpillar is being called into coming, in, coming into being a butterfly. And so, as Tama says, we need an extraordinary experience to unlock our extraordinary mind. So these times of crisis and disarray, and they're actually opportunity. They're actually the calling for us to move into that higher level of spiritual knowingness, spiritual living. And with, at CLF here at, in, in the New Thought community, talk is cheap. Are we modeling? Are we modeling these very principles with which we speak of? So you and I are on a precipice on our growing edge. And I love being on my growing edge. I, I, I kind of, I think I signed up for an accelerated life. I think many of you did too, that we said, okay, we'll come back and we will understand that as we are in the midst of whatever is going on in our world, that we're, we're coming forth to be a beacon of light. We are coming forth to be a, a, a person of power and authority and kindness and love in the midst, even when we cannot see that around us, that's what we're gonna to choose to be. So I wanna tell you about a, a man who really embodied that. He lived back in the last century and his name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. This is a picture of him. He was born in 1906 and he became a Lutheran minister. He lived in Germany. He actually came from a very learned family. His father was a very well-known uh, psychologist and was a teacher at one of the local universities. And he, he grew up in a very educated way and he decided that he was going to become a minister and got his teaching uh, there in Germany, but then actually left and went to America, went to New York City, as a matter of fact, where he was studying um, uh, at, at a college there at Union. And so as he was uh, studying, uh, a friend of his in his class invited him to go to a, a 
uh, church in Harlem. So he went to this uh, church in Harlem that had was all African Americans, and Dietrich Bonhoeff had never been in anything like this. And he saw people singing gospel songs and and just really getting passionate as as even the sermon was being delivered. And he was just amazed at how people were living the philosophy that they were talking about, that they were really getting into it. He was forever changed by that. And he loved going to that church the entire time he was in New York. So he went back to Germany. And unfortunately, the Third Reich had come into power. And talk about disarray, talk about crisis. There were a lot of changes that were happening as Hitler came into power in Germany. And pretty soon it became very uncomfortable because um, Hitler decided that the state of um, the, the nation of Germany, now the churches would all fund, fall under his domain. And so this was very disconcerting for ministers because that now Hitler was the head of the church. That was the way it was presented. And Dietrich said, no, no, Christ is the head of our church. Spirit is the head of our church. And so he formed a group that was that was actually in opposition of the Third Reich, which was not a popular thing to do. And he he suffered greatly for that because things started happening where um, eventually he was thrown into prison for it. But going back a second, he he started teaching and he he joined the German intelligence system. And I love this part of the story because here is a man who is trained as a minister and yet knows that his church is being changed in ways that he cannot he cannot be a proponent of. So he joins the German intel military intelligence, but he becomes a double agent. <laughs> so he's a minister, but he's also a double agent. And he starts going to other countries under the guise of being this Lutheran minister and was actually doing counterintelligence um, for the allies. This took great courage. This, this was someone who, who definitely uh, was standing up and standing in his power. He wrote a wonderful book called The Cost of Discipleship during that time, which is still available today, still widely read. And even though he has very traditional roots um, you know, from mainstream religion, it's a fabulous read about how we can't just talk about these ideas. We have to live them. And his way of awakening was embodying these principles day in and day out, no matter what danger that put his life in. He had to live this way. Eventually, they, the Germans said, no, you can't publish any books any longer because it was just, it was too against what they thought. So he couldn't publish, and then they eventually threw him in prison. And unfortunately, within months of the Allies uh, winning the war, he was put to death. But the legacy of Dietrich Bonhoeffer is this, that when you take a stand, you are saying, I am here to be a disciple of the Christ within me. I am here to take a stand for the spiritual nature of who I am, for the idea that I can embody power and kindness and compassion and grace, and that nothing and no thing can come between that and nothing can separate me from my understanding of my God. And one of his best known quotes is, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Now he's not talking about dying in the physical sense there, He's talking about dying to our human sense, to our human self. And, and the Bible talks about this quite a bit, that we are here to, to uh, renew our minds. That's the whole idea behind that. Think a new thought is what we would say in new thought. What is that which is holding us back? What is that which is keeping us dormant and asleep? And what can awaken us is a new thought. It's dying to the old and living in the new. That takes tremendous courage and tremendous skill as we keep practicing these ideas. And the, 
what's that old saying? Practice makes perfect. Well, perfect practice makes perfect. When we keep doing it again and again and again, when things show up in our life and we have to show love to those who are unloving, when we have to show kindness to those who are not kind, when we have to forgive those who are, quote, unforgivable, have done unforgivable things in this world, that's the road that the master walks on. That's what a spiritual master is saying. I'm game on. I'm here to do that. I'm here to live these principles, even when there's no earthly reason for me to do so. There is a spiritual reason for me to be called to this higher level of expression. The art of awakening is saying yes to each and every principle without exception. There are no exceptions. We love all. We live for all. And we die to the old again and again and again, because that Christ, that spirit center within us is always that changeless, that that idea that says, you are my beloved. And if you are my beloved, so is everyone else. We have to know that. We have to know that there is something in the unseen working for our greater good each and every time we say, I'm here, game on. It's time to move forward. See, awakening, awakening expands our possibility. It expands our thinking about who we are and how we, what we're here to do. I'm reminded of that story in, um, in Second Kings where the widow the widow, uh, uh, her husband has just passed and she's greatly in debt and people are coming to take her sons as slaves to pay off the debts. She goes to Elisha and Elisha tells her, do you have a pot in your home or what, what do you have in your home? And she said, well, I have a very small vial of oil. Oil in those days was very expensive and uh, very valued. And she said, I have a very small vial of that. He said, do you have a pot in your home? She said, yes. And he said, tell your sons to go to every neighbor and ask them for whatever pot they can spare and bring that back into your home. She did as, as Elisha told her. And they bring back all of these pots. And as they, as they do so, he had also commanded her, take your vial of oil and start pouring it. She pours it into the first pot. It fills up. Surprisingly, she didn't think that a little small vial of oil would do it. She pours it into the second pot. And she, and she finds out, yes, that too is being filled now. Third pot, fourth pot. Pretty soon, every pot that her sons had brought back were now filled to the rim. And Elisha had said to her, once that happens, Take that oil and sell it and pay off of your debts, which is what she did. And her sons were not in harm's way. Now, we know that the metaphysical reasoning behind this is the law of expectation. When you are developing your art of awakening, you are expecting nothing but good. We don't get what we want. We get what we expect. And so her expectation was, I'm going to fill this vessel, and I have all these vessels to fill. That is the symbology that we are here to expand our thinking into a higher level of expectation, a higher level of saying, you know what? I'm not thinking big enough. I know that I have unlimited, unlimited prosperity love, kindness, all of the God qualities that are available to me are, are available in unlimited capacity. And yet, why do I just have this small pot? That's, that's all I have. Why do I not expand my horizon to a greater good? And so the widow teaches us that all we need do is collect, you know, all of all of the ideas that yes i expect good because i'm collecting more pots to put that in i know that i too have the cattle on a thousand hills 
and that I can claim my divine birthright as a beloved, blessed being of God. There is nothing, nothing that we cannot do. And the art of awakening is saying yes to that higher level of expectation that God is with us, that as a co-creative force, the God within us is always supporting us. That is so easy to forget in times like this. That is so easy to go, well, that, that might be working over there, but this compartment of my life, boy, it's not working at all. That's where the rubber meets the road, my friends. That's where we have to say, I'm going to do my inner work until I can see that which I can know and know the truth about myself until I make that 18 inch journey down to my heart. It will absolutely come into fruition if I hold the high watch and never stray from the one. The art of awakening is a skill that we must continue developing throughout our entire lives. In my naivete, when I first got into spiritual growth, which was way back in my teens, I used to think someday I would get to a place where I could just rest on my laurels and I could just really reap the benefits of all the wisdom I had gained. It doesn't work like that, I found out. I found out that there are challenges and what happens is the better challenges keep, they keep growing. And so if you're having the same problems you had five years ago, you might want to take a look at that. We're always going to have challenges and, and difficulties in our lives, but they're going to be new. They're going to be different. They're going to be pulling us, pulling us upward if we are doing our work. That naivete of mine of thinking that I could rest on my laurels is not the way of a master. The master is always working to expand his or her thinking and consciousness and frequency and vibration to for the good of all mankind. We move from I-centered to we-centered. We move from a place of it's all about me and my growth to I'm here to grow so that I can help this world grow itself. Does that make sense? That, again, is an awakening that happens within each one of us at some point. And, and, and as we grow to that place, all of a sudden, we're now, we're now caring for the world. We're now caring for, for things that might not have been in our realm before. And that humanity, the growth of humanity, is first and foremost in our life. When we are going through these steps of awakening, we're finding that we, we are, are finding these difficulties are moving us into a place of, gee, I just don't know if I can do that. So when there was a, uh, a wonderful, well, we all know Star Trek. Remember Star Trek back in the, in the 60s, the original Star Trek? Well, the original Star Trek was um, with Captain James T. Kirk and Spock and... Um, and Jim McCoy, the doctor. Well, when they, when when the creator Gene Roddenberry of Star Trek was going to start filming the television series, the original television series, they told him you only have a certain amount of budget, and he couldn't figure out how he was going to show up the Enterprise landing on planets. It was going to be too costly for. The, the technological aspect, which was still in its primitive stages, the special effects of landing the enterprise onto a planet. And he couldn't figure out how to, how to do that within the budget that he did. And finally, he came up with an idea. He said, what if I create this thing called a transporter? The transporter room will be where people beam up and beam down. And so this slide shows you how they, they, they created that special effect simply because there wasn't enough budget to do anything beyond that. What is that old phrase? Necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> so his lack of, of budget forced his creativity to come up with a whole new idea, which now seems very passe because we all know that whole idea of be me up Scotty. And so Gene Roddenberry had to tap into that infinite creative intelligence within him simply to find a way around 
a physical limitation of budget and in doing so created a way that that I'm sure somebody is working on this somewhere on the planet, how they can do it today, because everything else on Star Trek is, is pretty much coming about and in, into uh, reality. And so I know that the art of awakening is about us tapping into that creative, infinite intelligence that always has solution. Solution, as my friend David Alt says, solution already exists. If we simply allow and surrender, knowing that the problem, the difficulty is something we can let go. And because we know that we have to get to the level of solution rather than the level of problem. And before we can get there, we have to raise our consciousness and awaken to the idea, I know there's a solution here. I expect a solution to show up. That's where I want us as awakened beings to live. Ernest Holmes had this to say about it. The belief in a life apart from good is a dream from which we must awake. If we are to taste the waters of reality, that's reality with a capital R, which flow from the source of life. This is but a dream if we are not fully participating. I know many people in my life who are sleepwalking through life. I, at times, have done that myself, where it's a lot easier just to disconnect and be unconscious. But you and I have said, no, I'm going to be a conscious being. I'm going to be someone who steps up and says, I'm here. I'm here to be in the game, not the stands watching. I'm here to play in the game. And as an awakened being, as a conscious being, that means I have responsibility for everything in my life. Everything. My thoughts, my deeds, my actions, my words, everything is my responsibility. My responsibility. An awakened being tries to live like the lotus. Thich Nhat Hanh said, you cannot grow lotus flowers on marble. You have to grow them in the mud. Without mud, you cannot have a lotus flower. And I love how the lotus flower, when it's there, even if a speck of mud flicks up onto it, just someone's, you know, something steps into the water or a fish or something comes by, the lotus is so precious and so smooth, it rolls right off. The mud cannot stick to it. And in this way, the awakened part of us is changeless. Nothing can stick to it. Nothing can mar its beauty, its power, its, its passion. And so when we're like the lotus, we know that we can be in this world. And if the world's dirt and grime and all of that, the negativity of the world comes upon us, it won't stick. It won't stick. It will we'll be like Teflon. It'll just fall right off because we've done the work and we are so powerful in our vibration of positivity, of conscious, conscious awareness that negativity has doesn't stand a chance with us. The Buddha said this, as a blue or white lotus is born in the water, grows up and is unpolluted by the water, so too has the perfected one, also could be called the awakened one, grown up in the world and has risen above the world and stands unpolluted by it. Unpolluted. And I, I don't know about you, but I would like to live an unpolluted life. I'd like to know that even if pollution of negativity comes my way, it just rolls on by. There is nothing that mars the beauty and the power of me as a spiritual stand for good. There is nothing that can knock me off center. Even if it does a little bit, I come right back. You know those those clowns that used to punch and it would bounce right back? That's what I want to be. I want to be that kind of, of, of idea that no matter what punch comes my way, I bounce right back. Because I am firmly convicted in the, in the teachings of our spiritual world that says, that I am love and kindness and compassion and beauty and power. 
and nothing moves me from that conviction at all. You and I can live like that as fully mature, awakened beings, consciously choosing how to live our lives day in and day out. The lotus actually takes the mud and takes nourishment from it. It grows right up out of the mud. And we can learn to live like this, that no matter what's going on around us, we can be like that lotus and take our nourishment from it and from the deep source that knows that it is a lotus and nothing can change that. That's how I want to live as an awakened, conscious, spiritual being. This is a time for waking up, my friends. This is a time for us to put aside whatever thoughts we have that we are here forever. The time is now. This is the only instant we have. The holy instant is here, right now. I'm reminded of uh, a wonderful talk that I saw recently um, by Esther Hicks and Abraham. And for those of you that don't know, Abraham is the entity that comes through Esther Hicks. And I found this wonderful um, uh, selection on YouTube, and I want to show you a part of this at this moment so that you can see what she is talking about, staying awake, staying awake in that place that knows that we are here only, only to be a part of the one, and that our mission is critical right now. Our mission is so critical. So here is Esther Hicks talking about her experience with that as Abraham. We like it when you get your back up against a wall sometimes because that causes you to launch rockets and it also causes you to focus. And what we mean by that, it causes you to do more deliberately what you came here to do. You are a powerful creator. You are pure, positive energy in a physical body. You are a creative genius. You are a brilliant creator. And not one of you said, well, I'll go forth into a physical existence. I'll go forth into a human body. But get it all cleaned up first. Get it all looking really good. Get all the bugs worked out. And when it is pleasing to me, then I'll come forth and I'll observe the the things that are there then. Not one of you said that. Instead, you said, I'm eager to jump in because I know the variety and contrast will activate within me my personal preferences. So I get to be a personal deliberate creator. And you also said, and I know that my inner being, the larger part of me from whence I have come will remain non-physically focused and will receive each and every desire that I launch and will hold steady those desires in a frequency of pure positive energy. So that any time I get in the vicinity of that, I will feel it and I will feel the inspiration of it and I will be guided. I will be called toward not just the end result because the end result is what I'm looking for, but called along the journey to the end result, the end result that won't stay the end result because there will be another and another and another and another. You will never get it done and you cannot get it wrong. And the reason you can't get it wrong is because it's never done. Wherever you stand is causing you to launch new requests, which are being granted immediately by source and non-physical energy and your inner being. And so whether you are deliberately meditating and deliberately quiet your mind, whether you are deliberately focusing, whether you are wanting to be a deliberate creator, still, Everything is working as you knew it would. You knew that contrast would inspire new desire. And you knew that your inner being would get hold of that and become it. And you knew that in that happening, that the whole of you would have a stronger point of attraction. And you knew that the evolution of your species and all other species is based upon exactly that. You knew that the well-being would happen whether you were consciously letting yourself be deliberately in on it or not. That's why you jumped in with such eagerness. And so we know that all is well whether you get hold of these ideas and are able to deliberately apply them. But we want you to feel not just the ease of relief. We want you to feel 
the delicious satisfaction of being a hands-in-the-clay, deliberate creator. Nothing is more exhilarating than to, for life to cause you to identify a desire and for you to recognize you're not in the vibrational frequency of that desire right now. You can feel you're off because you feel doubt. You have a desire, but you feel doubt. And maybe the doubt, usually in the beginning, is stronger than the desire. But because you know about this and you know what doubt means and you know what feeling better means, because you know what your emotions mean, because they are the indicator of what you're doing vibrationally and how you're closing the gap and whether or not you are leaning in the direction of who you really are or leaning in the direction of who you were, which caused you to become more. When you are understanding that and feeling yourself not energized, that's not that's not what we want you to feel feel yourself feel yourself called and trust even before the evidence that we've got you You're we've got you we've got you trust that you are called you are called i love that that we are all being called to a higher level of being. And that if we're alive on this planet, we have the capability within us to be fully conscious in everything that we do. And we impact everything and everyone on the planet by what we do. There is no higher calling than that, none. And our opportunities, going back to what I said originally, that we are absolutely being pulled into something new and exciting and fabulous our opportunities for awakening are cleverly disguised as crisis discomfort and even pain that gives me hope that gives me hope that every time i start feeling that doubt that that esther was talking about that i'm not in alignment with what i should be doing then i I, I know that I still have to hold to that idea that I am here to be a powerful spiritual being mastering these principles, embodying these principles to the very best of my ability until I see the fruition of them. And if it takes years, it takes years. I'm here. I am called. And so are you. So are you. Rumi said this. Hold on to the reins of love and don't be afraid. Hold on to the real behind the false and don't be afraid. You must know that the beloved you seek is none other than you. Hold on to this truth and don't be afraid. The beloved you are seeking is none other than you. There's not a white horse coming in to rescue. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And so if I take that stance, if I understand that stance, I know that I have to step up and live as that spiritual being that is the beloved, that is the co-creative force within me, creating this world day in and day out, practicing, mastering the principles that I hold dear, that I can be a light, a beacon, a, a shining light on the hill, and that all of those around me can then be tuned into the frequency that I am, which is source. It's, it's cause. It's first cause. That's where I want to live. That's the great awakening. That's the story of the prodigal son that, that Rhonda read to us earlier. Coming back to the one, coming back to source, and staying with that, that's the key. That's the key. So will you join me this week in waking up, in calling forth that master in you that is saying, game on, I'm ready. Put me, put me in, coach. <laughs> I'm ready to play. I'm ready to play. Because I invite you to feel called by God to this reckoning, this, this shift in consciousness 
this, this quickening that is happening within us and thus within the world. You have been called. You have been qualified. You may not feel that way, but join me in thinking the possibility that you are called to something that is greater than that you can even imagine at this point. It's up to you if you answer that call. So I invite you, listen. What is calling you forth? What is calling to your greater sense of self, to that, that inner sense of self that knows you are here to do a mighty work? And with the law of expectation, like the widow had, you know that your expectation is, I am. I am a master at what I am doing. I am a master at being the principles that I hold closest, that I value. I invite you to be and live as a master this week. Just surrender yourself this week and just live as a master would. It will change your life. I guarantee it. Let's take that under prayer. Oh, we've processed a lot this morning. So let's take a deep breath in and let it out. So this is what I know. That each one of us has ears to hear, eyes to see. That we are absolutely cracked open wide this morning. Our hearts are cracked open. Our minds are cracked open. And a new thought has entered. A new awakening is now coming forth. A new idea is birthing right now. And so we listen, we observe, we know that God is on the scene, that God's got us, and that we absolutely can step into a whole new way of living as a master. And just as the great way showers have shown us, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, all of those great way showers in our in our past that we study, we know that we too are of that one mind. We too are called to a greater awakening of ourselves and of humanity. And so I just bless this time together this morning. I know that the awakening, the quickening, the shift is happening right now. For each and every person within the sound of my voice, I know that something is happening in the unseen for our greater good. And so I bless each and every individual who is answering that call and saying, yeah, I'm in the game too. I'm ready to play. I'm ready to step up and be that empowered master that I know that I already am. And so I simply let these words go. I know that as I have declared them in mind, the only place anything ever happens, it is done. It is done. And I can rest in the knowledge that God is on the scene and that God is in the midst of all of this that is happening in our world. And so we simply say, thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit, for all that is and all that is yet to be. I let it be so. And together we say, and so it is. And now back to you, Carrie. Reverend Sal, first of all, it's so good to see you uh, and to be with you again. And what a powerful message that was. And I learned something new about the lotus flower this morning. And I love that analogy. Anything that is not to my liking, not for my highest and best good, I just simply let it fall away. It won't stick to me. Yes. I did have one of those bozo clowns that I used <laughs> and it would come back. And so uh, wonderful, just putting these, these thoughts, images in my mind to bring me through the week as I continue my spiritual practices and become hopefully more awakened every single day. So thank you for that. Thank you. This is the time we participate in the divine giving and receiving by giving of our tithes and our offerings. Creative Living Fellowship is a tithing church, and we invite you to join in this sacred practice by tithing here at CLF. 
click the donate link on Facebook or on our website um, or in the comments on Facebook. Uh, you can also use your smartphone if you'd like to text to give. We appreciate, truly appreciate your financial support of Creative Living Fellowship. Although we cannot be together, uh, the church still has financial responsibilities and we are so blessed to have your support to meet those. Let us now say our offering blessing together. Here we go. Divine love through me blesses me and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I circulate. Thank you, God. And so it is. And as you make your donations, Let's hear again from Gary Lynn Floyd with our offering music. Here we go. I am stable and secure. I surround myself with joy. Take care of my well-being. Cosmic vibes have got me singing. I'm stable. Insecure, I am stable and secure. I surround myself with joy. Take care of my well being, cosmic vibes have got me singing. I'm stable and secure. From the soles of my feet to the top of my head. When the flow is complete, I will go where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Yeah. Karen says, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Eddie says, I am the place where God shows up. Jamie says, love is my religion, helps me make my own decision to be stable and secure. From the soles of my feet to the top of my head, yeah. When the flow is complete, I will go where I'm laid. Lead me where I'm laid. surround myself with joy take care of my well-being cosmic vibes you got me singing i'm stable and secure karen says i'm too blessed to be stressed and he says i am the place where god shows up jamie says love is my religion helps me make my own decision to be stable and secure from the soles of my feet to the top of my head, yeah. When the flow is complete, I will go where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Lead me where I'm led. Love you, Creative Living Fellowship. Till next time, take care. And Gary, we love you too. Thank you so much for being with us today. What a treasure you are. We appreciate it so much. So we have a couple closing announcements. Number one, don't forget 
the very important special membership meeting next Sunday, September 27, 1130 a.m. sharp. All active members need to be present for some important votes coming up. Don't forget also several opportunities for prayer by our practitioners right now. Go to Zoom after the service. You can be in a private, secure prayer room with a practitioner. It is confidential. On-call practitioners available to pray for you at any time throughout the week. We're all, all the practitioners were listed on the website. And of course, you can always submit a written prayer request to prayer at creativelivingfellowship.com. And finally, community connection meeting with Dr. Sherry on Tuesday evenings, 6.30 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. Most importantly, please continue to connect with each other and support each other. And please let us know how CLF can support you during these extraordinary times. Thank you for joining us today. And Reverend Sherry, We'll be back with us next week. Now for our closing song, I release and I let go. I